Hello everyone, Chris Peterson here, bringing you another 15 minute game on the Internet Chess Club. I'm going to be playing White against Glucifer, rating 1894 from Norway. So this game is going to be a London system, um, with the knight c6 instead of, uh, like knight f6 and g6 or anything like that. So, already a fairly interesting opening out of the gate. Um, let's see what... My typical plan here is to play knight f3, uh, bishop b5, and knight e5, and put pressure on this knight. And I, I generally find that this knight is somewhat misplaced because you can't play c6 or c5. Um, the natural ways to attack the uh, the white center, so. And I think already black is actually in trouble because I'm going to be getting in this knight e5 and it's going to put a lot of pressure on this c6 square that is pretty much already um, being undermined due to the uh, bishop being blocked from being able to come back to d7. Um, so, interesting opening choice from black. Um, he gets, looks like he's got the bishop d6 in, so he's going to be uh, somewhat okay, but after knight e5, he's going to have to take, and then I, I gain the two bishops for one. And, uh, yeah, so I mean, maybe knight f6, or pawn to f6, maybe? And then I, I'll go back to bishop g3, and then I can castle kingside pretty safely. Um, but it looks like I'm not, I'm not going to get the same type of pressure that I would normally get. So he reacted pretty well. Um, but now he's lost his good um, dark square bishop. So Now if I want, I could take this g7 pawn. Um, is that really a good move though? If I take on g7, he goes rook g8, bishop f6, rook takes g3. Um, queen f3 doesn't work because of bishop e4, so I would have to play, let's see, queen f3, bishop e4, queen f4, no, that, does, that doesn't look very good. Um, I could go queen h5, threatening to come into um, some of these squares eventually, but that doesn't look very promising either. Um, maybe I could play pawn g4. Bishop e4, f3, bishop g6, bishop takes g7, uh, rook g8, bishop f6. That doesn't look too bad. Um, but then my king might be somewhat exposed to um, checks either along the e1, h4 diagonal. Um, um, but if I do get castled eventually on the queen side, he might have some sort of attack later on. Then I can never really take this knight because it'll open up the b file for him. Um, but I can win a pawn, like, immediately here, so that's an interesting thing to look at for sure. Uh, g4, knight g6 doesn't work, I just take his bishop. So I think... Okay, how about g4, uh, bishop e4, f3, bishop g6, h4, h6, or h5. Um, then I take on g6, g7, sorry. And then bishop f6 and then g5. Although he'll be able to take if he can play if he plays h5. I think that might be a, an interesting line to go into. So uh, my my basic idea is a uh, kingside pawn storm at this point. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, if he goes bishop g6 right away, I'll just play h4. Then if he plays h5, I'll just play g g5, and I'll have a tough time. Um, Basically, he has to give up his g6 pawn or castle kingside, which would be somewhat dangerous for him. Especially if I go uh, knight d2, f3 to, to e5 eventually. Um, and I can also undermine his, his light squares on his kingside with a move like bishop d3 and trade the light square bishops off. But I, I'm basically trying to win his, g, his g7 pawn at this point. As soon as as soon as he goes bishop g6, I can play bishop takes g7 without fear of losing my g pawn. And I'm not too concerned about opening up the uh, the king side at all because I'm most likely going to be castling queen side. Uh, so it's just a matter of time. We have to wait and see what he does. Um, I'll probably gain quite a few points after this game if I win because he's 
He's like 30, 31 points ahead of me. Um, let's just wait and see what he does. I, he only has two reactions, bishop e4 or bishop g6. So, well, I guess, no, he can't move that knight. I guess, he could play a move like a6, but that loses a piece, so that doesn't work. Um, knight g6 loses a piece. There really isn't any other move, so, yeah, so bishop g6 or bishop e4. Which one is he going to decide? Okay, so he does neither, and he lets me get a pawn on e6. That's pretty interesting. Um, so let me think about this for a second. So pawn to f6, if I go back to bishop g3, that kind of negates my attack a little bit. Uh, I could also play uh, pawn takes f5, pawn takes e5. Queen h5 check, g6, pawn takes g6, knight takes g6, and then um, maybe rook g1 on his knight. Then what does he do? Rook g1, maybe he goes king f7, but that seems kind of scary. Because um, I'll probably play bishop takes... Well, pawn f7, knight, knight d2. Like, I don't have enough development to have like a complete crusher here, um, but I'm pretty sure opening up the king side is a bad idea for him since I have more space and mobility with my long-range pieces than him. So um, I think, okay, pawn takes f5, pawn takes e5, queen h5 check, if knight g6, I could play pawn takes, so he has to play g6, pawn takes g6, he can't play h takes because of his rook, so he has to play knight takes g6. Now I have a queen on h5, then maybe I can play pawn takes e5, and I, I went a pawn that way. So that's a pretty good line. Um, then I, then both of his knights are pinned, so as soon as he moves his king, for example if he castles, then I could do that. Um, actually, I think rook g1 forces king uh, f7, or, or castling looks too dangerous. Um, so, yeah, king f7, or maybe he goes queen, or king d7, maybe? Also possible is queen f6, I suppose. Queen f6, pawn takes e5. Um, queen takes e5, knight c3, and then he can castle queenside, and then so can I. So, looks like it's not quite working out for me tactically, um, but it still puts a lot of pressure on his position. So I'm going to go ahead and play pawn takes f5. I, I complete my development a little bit faster than him, because I'll have a, a rook on g1, and he, he won't. Um, so I think... Queen h5 check. It would be nice if I could get this pawn on e6 without too much problem. But right now, I can't. Uh, well, if he moves his king, then yeah, I could. But um, Yeah, so pawn g6, pawn takes, knight takes, rook g1, queen f6. Pawn takes e5, actually. He can't take back the queen, can he? Yeah, I guess he can. I don't, I don't have to trade queens, that's no good. I think I'll just play pawn takes right now. And then that kind of prevents him from playing queen f6. So pawn takes, and now maybe he can play queen h4. Yeah, queen h4, and, and that pretty much forces the queen trade. But I'm up a pawn at this point, so I'm not too concerned about trading queens. I mean, I don't like trading queens, but hey, if... You know, he pretty much forces you. You don't have much choice. So, I mean, he's down a pawn. I mean, I guess he could castle and potentially get the pawn back. But I think what I'll do is I'll just take on uh, d6, play knight d2, and castle queenside myself. Um, maybe plant the knight on d4 or something. I'm not sure. Um, or I could go knight f3 to g5, and that would be pretty devastating. If he castled kingside. 
Um, yeah, so I'm up a pawn. That's that's a good start, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so this game is already kind of shaping up to be a little bit better than that last one. Um, and as soon as he lets me, I'm going to play f4 as well. So I'm, I'm going to be getting quite a bit of a lockdown on the position here. Uh, if, if he doesn't play queen h4, I'm probably going to play rook g1. And then if he does play queen h4, I can just take and then play rook g7. And I have a uh, pretty strong control of the 7th uh, rank. So, um, Yeah, we're just going to see what he's going to do. Uh, queen e7 is potential. Uh, queen, h5, queen h4 is probably his, his best try here. Um, tr just get the queens off and hope for the best, really. I mean, my pawns are going to be a lot more solid than his, because I... Yeah, I have double pawns, but they're supported by uh, f4 and e3, so... And I have a bishop, so a bishop is usually a pretty good um, concept. So he plays uh, pawn to a6. That move is a little bit questionable. Um, th thinking... Uh, bishop d3. Well, bishop d3 allows him to take on e5, so that's not that good. Um, could play rook g1, and then if he goes queen h4, queen h4 I take, and then bishop takes uh, c6. And if he plays... Um, pawn takes b5, then I have rook takes g6, wins a piece, so that's good. I, I think rook g1 is the right move here. Rook g1, queen h4, queen takes h4, knight takes h4, bishop takes knight check, b takes c6, and then king e2 to prevent the, the fork on f3. Um, then I can play f4. Um, or or I could go rook g7 is also a potential move. So I think rook g1. Um, if he if he takes my bishop, he I think he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, sorry, a little bit of a yawn there. So rook g1. If pawn takes b5, rook takes g6, then I'm threatening um, some pretty devastating exposed checks. He plays pawn takes. I can take his rook. Um, so rook takes h8 check, king d7, uh, queen g7 check, king c8, and then queen takes g6. So I thought he might do that. Um, let me see for a second here. Queen h4. Queen takes h4, knight takes h4, bishop takes c6, check, pawn takes c6, rook g7, uh, maybe rook b8, uh, b3. Yeah, he's, he's in pretty big trouble there. I'll go ahead and go into that line. It looks like a pretty solid um, way to continue for me. Uh, although, if, I don't really want him to take my h pawn, so I think I'll... But I, I have to stop him from doing that kind of stuff, so I think I'll just come in. Well, I think king e2 is the best move here, to be honest. Yeah, it allows him off the back rank, but there's not much that I could do about it, really. If I go rook g7, um, my lack of development on the queen side might uh, screw me over, so I'll just go knight d2. Oh, knight d2 was a, a good move, too, but I'll go knight d2 next, and then knight b3, and come into either d4 or c5. Play b4, a3, c3 to support it. So I'm up a pawn. I think my position is superior. Um, castle's queenside. That move has got to be questionable. <clears throat> What's the best way to exploit that move? I think just coming into the c5 square is going to be devastating, so... I think knight d2, um, if he ever attacks e5, I'm just going to play f4, so I'm not worried about that. <coughs> if he plays pawn to d4, I'm just going to play um, knight to b3. And if pawn takes e3, I'll play king takes e3. And uh, continue marching my... 
or just get my knight up into c5. Um, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what he's going to do. <coughs> uh, if he ever threatens to come into f3, I can play f4 as well. So f4 is like my all-purpose consolidation move. So um, I think maybe he should play knight g6, get his knight off the back rank. But knight f5 is also good because it, it prevents my rook from coming into g7. Um, so I think knight f5 is a good move for him. So we'll just have to wait and see what he does, I guess. My position's quite a bit um quite a bit more solid than his, I feel. I mean, we both have three pawn islands. Um but I think mine are a little bit easier to defend, especially now that he's castle uh castle queenside, so um again I'm not really worried about uh, the rook trade. I'm more concerned about taking over this c5 square and getting b4, a3, c3. Because if I if I can lock all of his pawns into this uh, cruddy position, he'll have a lot of weaknesses to defend. So, yeah. I don't know. He has to stop knight c5, I think. Because it, it's hitting both e6 and a6, so he's going to lose a pawn in that variation. Um... And if, I don't know, taking on g1 is no good, because that, that just gives me absolute control of the g-file. The only open file on the board. Um, yeah, so I thought I might do that. Um, so I'm just going to play f4, and that consolidates everything. Like I was saying it would. Now, if he can get his knight to e4, that would be pretty good for him, but it, um, his move knight g6 puts it the furthest away it can be from e4. It'll take him four moves to get there. Uh, meanwhile, my knight's coming into c5 unstoppable, so. Um, yeah, I'm just going to lock down his queen side and penetrate with my rooks eventually. Um, I can also double on the g-file at any time now that he's blocked it off with his knight. And uh, that's about it, so. I'm just going to go knight c5 like I was planning. Then uh, maybe rook g3 and rook a g1. And then h4, h5, and he's he's in big trouble. So, um, my knight is not, it's not possible to attack my knight right away, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't want to go to g2 and give him a, a free tempo with uh, knight h4. So, I also have uh, ideas of rook h3 uh, attacking his vulnerable h7 pawn. <coughs> So this ending, even though it doesn't look too bad for him material-wise, he's only down one pawn. Um, positionally, I think he's just uh, kind of screwed. <laughs> so, uh, rook a g1, h4, h5, and it's just kind of devastating. So, again, uh, on this d4 move, I'm actually just going to play king takes if he ever takes with his pawn. And, yeah, I'll have to worry about f4 a little bit, but uh, all in all, it's not really that... Uh, actually... Maybe I can get my knight on f6. That would be a pretty good idea. Uh, 94, 90, knight f6. And I think actually this d4 move weakens his pawn structure further. Because if he ever takes, then uh, then he's got four pawn islands. And none of them are protected by any... None of them can be protected by pawns at any point. So I think... Uh, rook a g1. Uh, pawn takes, king takes... And then uh, I guess he could attack my pawn. But I can always go knight d3 and defend it again. Or like rook g4 or rook f3. Or I just have a multitude of ways of defending that pawn. Um, or if I can go knight e4 to f f6, that's also good. Because it will obstruct his, uh, his vertical attack on the f4 pawn. So I'm not sure exactly what he's going to do here. It's He's all bottled up. He's got back rank weaknesses now as well with my knight on c5. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering if I could even sack here on this knight. I, I probably could. It wouldn't be that uh, unheard of for sure. I, I think rook g4, um, because his knight will hang if he ever pushes, pushes his h pawn. Uh, and he can't attack it at all, so. 
and my plan is just going to be knight e4 to f6, and that, that's going to undermine his defense of the g6 square, and uh, yeah, so. In fact, I might be able to play rook g to, I mean, rook to d1, then rook to d7 if he allows me. So that would be fairly good for me as well. Uh, and if he plays rook d8 to contest it, then I just trade and play knight takes e6, and then I have rolling connected pass pawns in the center. So that's that'll be devastating for him as well. And the time is starting to dwindle down, so this was a nice uh, kind of positional game. Um, it's unclear how he's going to continue. He doesn't have much of a plan. Um, he could potentially play knight e7 and come into either d5 or f5, but, uh, yeah, I thought he might try that. So, I think my king is perfectly safe on e4, um, but I can't really let him, um, well, I can't take on e6, it's defended, and I can't play rook g7 right now either. Um... So I'm thinking knight e4, knight e4, knight f5 check, and then maybe king, um, king f2 gets out of all the other checks that he could potentially play. And then he goes rook d8, mm, that's not looking too hot. Well then knight f6, then rook d2 check, that would be, that would be no bueno. So, um... Just trying to think of a good way to defend my my stuff here. Maybe I'll just come up with my king. And uh Yeah, I think I'll just come up with my king. King e4, and if he goes knight f5. Um I do have to worry a little bit about uh mate potentials with like rook e3 would be mate with his knight on f5. So I have to watch out for that, but uh I don't see his uh I don't see his stuff penetrating anytime soon. Also I think pawn c three will help defend his pieces from coming in. So he, he finally got his knight on a decent square. Um but it might be too little too late at this point. Um So again it's it's not hundred percent clear how he's planning on continuing here. If his h-pawn ever moves, I'm going to penetrate on g6. And it's almost like Zeus weighing at this point for black, so... I wish I could sack on e6 and take his knight, but right now it's not going to work out too well. Um, what does that move do? Not much. Okay, how about... I could play rook d1 now. That looks like a pretty decent move. Kind of like restrict his king from coming in. And, I mean, this rook is tied down to the e6 square, and this rook is, and his uh, f rook is tied down to his knight on f5, because if he ever moves it off the defense, I have knight e6, and then king takes uh, f5. So, he, he's definitely quite bottled up in this position. Um, what is knight h6? What is that? What does it do? Knight h6... I don't really understand what the purpose of that move was. So I'm just going to play rook g5. And then, I don't know, his knight's going to go back to f5? That doesn't make any sense. And now his knight can't even go to f5, so I'll play knight takes e6. And now... So I can't go rook g7 because of knight d6 check. Um... Well, actually, I could because I have check and then check for this king here and then queen. Um, this is the line that I'm thinking of. Okay. Uh, rook g7, knight e6 check, pawn takes d6, rook takes g7, uh, pawn to d7 check. If he goes king b8, then I just queen and win his rook there and I'm up a piece. If he goes king d8, I have knight b7 check. Followed by uh, queen, and uh, I win his other rook. So I think rook g7 is a, a good move here. 
Um, yeah, so, and of course knight g5 doesn't work, so I just play rook takes g5, so. Now, now that my rook is on the seventh rank, he's going to have a really tough time defending, I think. I mean, it's not... I don't, I, I don't have a crusher right away, like if it's my move again, I don't have a crushing move. Um, but now I have a pretty crusher move, this pawn to d7. So I'm just going to play rook takes. Well, let's see, rook takes, then he can play rook f5. And that would not be good, so I better play knight takes. So he's got a pretty good pin here. Did he win his pawn back? I guess he did. Um, thinking, thinking I still have an advantage here because I'm going to be able to penetrate with my king, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just stop all of his pawn moves so that my king can uh, sneak in. So, I mean, that was unfortunate. I kind of miscalculated a little bit there, but uh, not too bad. Um, but I think I have uh, a lot more pawn moves than he does, so he's going to be in quite a bit of trouble. Um, H5, B4, and I get a pass pawn, so he has to play C5. C5, H5, H6, C4, C6. B3, uh, King F7, and then I penetrate that way. So B4, and now I have a pass pawn, so I don't know what he's going to do. So I mean, that's a super clear king and pawn ending win. So that was a nice um, ending, fitting, fitting ending to that game. Um, he resigns, so let's, let's just go back a second. I think, I mean, my move wins for sure, but... Uh, it just seems like uh, it seems like I should be able to do better than what I did here. Well, I have knight takes here. That's potentially a win. Um, rook here. F5. That looks pretty strong as well. This knight's still hanging, so maybe rook g2. And I win the pawn that way. Um, I win the rook that way, I mean. And then there, maybe I could play pawn takes. No. Maybe I just come up with my king. This looks pretty strong for me as well. So, I mean, either way, it was still a win's a win, I guess. But that line was, the line that was played in the game was uh, pretty good for me as well. So, uh, that's about it for that game. I'll catch you guys next time.